Welcome to DD1324, Applied Programming and Computer Science, the course overview. This course is offered for degree program in Industrial Engineering and Management at the KTH Royal Institute of Technology for Year 3 students. It's offered by the CSC School, School for Computer Science. The course is worth three credits and it consists of nine class sessions, six programming sessions, six laboratory sessions, and the grade scale is pass or fail. You can find the course webpage at the link on this on the slide, and the announcements for the course will be made via KTH Social. There are four instructors for this course, and on this slide you can find their names, contact information, and office location. This year we'll be experimenting with a new format for the course, the flipped classroom. This will give students more freedom and allow them to learn at their own pace by viewing lectures online at home and not in the classroom. It will also free up more time for hands-on programming in the classroom and allow the students to interact with each other and with the instructors. Before every class session, we will post preparation materials onto the course website. These will include video lectures, online readings, and other web resources. The students are expected to prepare by watching these online lectures and reading the course materials before they come to class. During the class, we will spend the majority of the time doing exercises and programming with other students. We will also review the code of students at the end of each programming session. The typical classroom session will last for three hours. In the first five to ten minutes, the instructors will give an introduction to the programming exercise that we'll be doing for this session. In the next two and a half hours, the students will work in pairs to complete the programming exercise in the class. The students will half the time be able to choose their own pairings, and half the time we will choose the pairings for the students. The exercise should be be able to be completed during the allotted time. Students are also free to deviate from the exercise given by the instructors as long as it meets the criteria given at the beginning of the course. This gives students freedom to, to follow their own ideas in the programming exercise. In the next 10 minutes, students will be grouped into uh, groups of four or six and perform a peer review of each other's code. During this time, they will critique each other's work and look for ways to improve. Finally, in the last 15 minutes of the course, some students will be selected to demonstrate their program to the class. Each student will be required to do this once or during the course. ED1324 is a pass or fail course. The following criteria are required in order for students to receive credit for the course. First, the students must complete two mandatory laboratory assignments. They must also complete four of the in-class exercises, of which there are a total of six. The students must also perform a student code demonstration during one of the in-class exercises. The code for the laboratory assignments and the exercises must be submitted electronically to the, code, the, to the course code repository. In addition, the students must have a signed evaluation form from the instructors. The deadline to complete all these criteria is 5 o'clock p.m. on the 24th of February 2017. After this date, the final marks for the course will be reported. In total, 80 hours of work should be required for this course. 29 of these hours are in class, and 24 are in preparation for each course, including the, watching the video lectures. 33 hours have been reserved for the labs. 27 of them are, are dedicated for out-of-class work, and 6 for in-class work. There are two programming laboratory assignments required to complete the course. Students may work on these laboratory assignments alone or in pairs. The specifications for the laboratory assignments are available on the course website. Three class sessions have been set aside for in-class work on the laboratories. During these lab sessions, you can request help from the instructors viewing the queuing system with the following link. The class session on January 11, 2017 has been set aside for laboratory evaluation. You may also demonstrate your assignment by arrangement. Each, shouldn't, each student should come prepared to demonstrate their solution and answer questions about the code. And once their code has been approved, they can submit their completed laboratory assessment protocol to the course instructors and commit the code to this course repository. In addition to the laboratory, there are six in-class exercises. Exercises are designed to help students gain programming experience with the topics they are learning each week. They are intended to be completed in the classroom, and students may work alone or in pairs on these exercises. The exercises 
are designed to give students the freedom to choose their own solution, we will only provide rough specifications for what the students should include in their exercise. At the end of each programming exercise session, some students will be asked to demonstrate their exercise to the class. Into the C programming language, it will include basic programming concepts, the history and relevance of the C language, the fundamentals of syntax and instructions, compiling and linking, how to do make files and automation, the C preprocessor and macros, low controls such as if statements and loops, strings and arrays, I/O and streams dynamic memory and pointers, algorithms, debugging and testing, standard tools and libraries, and project management and structured programming in C. Course schedule is organized into 10 class sessions. In the first session, we will begin with an introduction to the course and an overview, as well as the first programming exercise. In the following three sessions, we will also work on programming exercises in the classroom. In the, fourth, er, in the fifth classroom session, we will dedicate the cl classroom time to working on the first laboratory. The following two sessions will be dedicated once again to programming exercises, and the final two sessions in 2016 will be used for laboratory work. Finally, one, one session is scheduled for January 2017, and this session is used for assessment of the laboratories and also for grading any missing work. There is no mandatory literature for DD1324, however, there is a wealth of literature on the internet. We have provided links for several of the resources that we find to be very useful in the course website. These include web tutorials for programming in C, tutorials on pointers and arrays, quick start guides for Valgrind and the, G the GDB GNU debugger, as well as two recommended books, the C programming language and C programming for absolute beginner. The officially supported environment for DD1324 will be the GNU C environment on Ubuntu Linux, which is available on the laboratory computers. You may also use Windows or Mac OS X on your personal machine at your discretion, but we will not guarantee that we can support incompatibilities between your platform on your computer and the laboratory machines. You will need the following development tools for this course. First and most importantly, you will need the GNU C compiler. Next, you will need a text editor. We prefer that you do not use an IDE because it hides certain aspects of compiling and linking that we want you to understand. Next, you will need a version control system interface in order to check your code into this, the course repository. Valgrind is a memory checker, which we will use to, check, to make sure your code does not have any memory leaks. Finally, you will need a debugger such as GDB. Here are instructions for setting up the GNU C compiler or GCC on your computer. If you have Ubuntu Linux, it's installed by default. You just need to make sure you have the essential packages installed by typing at the prompt sudo apt-get install build essential. If you have a Windows machine, you can install mingw, the minimalist GNU for Windows, or sigwin, a Unix-like environment for Windows. Finally, if you have Mac OS X, you can download the latest Xcode from Apple. One of the development tools that we need for this course is a text editor for writing code. Sublime is a cross-platform, sophisticated text editor for code and markup that features syntax highlighting, split editing, and multiple selections. It is available with a free trial for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS, and you can download it at worldwideweb.sublimetext.com. If you're using Linux, a text editor that comes free with Linux is gedit. It's included with Ubuntu. It's also a very powerful and useful editor. For Windows, we recommend Notepad++, which you can download at notepad-plus-plus.org. For other editors, we also recommend Text Wrangler for Mac OS X, Nano, Emacs, or Vim work on Ubuntu and OS X, and if you feel that you must use an IDE, we recommend Codeblocks, which is a cross-platform IDE. You can download that at www.codeblocks.org. Another development tool necessary for this course is a version control system. A version control system records changes to a file or a set of files over time, which you can recall specific versions of that file later. It allows you to go back and correct mistakes, and it also allows you to distribute and share your code. One version of a, a one interface for a version control system that we recommend is SmartGit, which works for Linux, 
Windows Mac OS X and you can download it at this following link. You will also need several debugging tools for debugging your code and for demonstrating that your code does not have memory leaks at the end of the course. These include Valgrind and the debugger GDB. They should be installed by default on your Ubuntu system, but if they are not, you can install them with the following command line, sudo apt-get install Valgrind and sudo apt-get install GDB. Finally, the course webpage is your main resource for electronic material and other materials for this course, including the schedule, video lectures, reading material, exercises, laboratories, etc. You can reach the course webpage at www.kth.se slash social slash course slash dd1324. This concludes the course overview with class dd1324. Thank you for watching.